Hughes's Lupercalia is a complex exploration of primal energy, fertility, and the cycle of life and death. The classical allusions to the Lupercalia festival serve as a backdrop for themes of renewal, the tension between civilization and wild nature, and the quest for vitality amidst barrenness. The imagery of the poem, from the feral dog to the mystic goats and the vigorous races, encapsulates a raw, untamed energy that seeks to invigorate and rejuvenate. Hughes's invocation of these ancient rites can be seen as an attempt to tap into their primal power to invigorate his own writing, as he described his poems as invocations to writing. The poem, thus, reaches its zenith in drawing on the powerful symbolism of Lupercalia, weaving a tapestry of myth, ritual, and poetic creation that seeks to harness the ancient energies of life and fertility for artistic renewal. The Lupercal cave is said to be where Romulus and Remus were nursed by a wolf mother, according to the myth of Rome's founding. While the details of the rite vary in different accounts, it is believed that the Lupercal cave housed an altar to Lupercus, the Roman god of shepherds, often linked with dogs and goats. The Luperci conducted the annual festival on the 15th of February there. During the festival, two goats and a dog were sacrificed, and their blood anointed the foreheads of two young patricians. Part of the goat's skin was made into a thong worn by the Luperci, while another part was fashioned into a whip used to strike those they encountered while running through the streets around Palatine Hill. Both fertile and infertile women hoped to be struck, believing it would promote fertility and easy childbirth. Mark Antony, who participated in the race, reportedly offered Julius Caesar the crown three times, which Caesar refused each time. Hughes's poem, with its classical allusions, is perhaps the most significant from the early part of his career. Associating with fertility rites, Hughes concludes his collection with a sort of incantation. He described the poems of Lupercal as invocations to writing. Thus, it becomes evident that the images from the Lupercalia festival, scattered throughout Lupercal, reach their peak here and serve to invigorate his future writings. Section 1. The poem begins with the depiction of a dog living a churlish life, thriving on scraps, thefts, and embodying anarchy of mindless pride. This dog is feral and not domesticated reflecting a life of primal survival and raw existence. The reference to the dog aligns with the Lupercalia festival, where dogs were sacrificed, symbolizing primal instincts and untamed nature. The dog's death, with closed eyes and grinning mouth, signifies a cycle of life and death that is central to the fertility rites of Lupercalia. The dog holds man's reasonable ways between its teeth, suggesting a tension between civilized order and wild, instinctual life. Section 2. This section focuses on a woman who seems touched by death, embodying a surviving barrenness. She is detached from the flow of life, with her past killed and future plucked out. This evokes the barrenness and isolation that fertility rites like Lupercalia aim to overcome. The dead are indifferent underground, and the hair and bone wisdom they offer contrasts with the living's quest for renewal and vitality. The poem suggests a rekindling of life through the brute's quick be tinder, evoking the spark of life that fertility rites seek to ignite. The woman's stark condition and the potential for renewal mirror the festival's aim to rejuvenate life and fertility. Section 3. Here, Hughes introduces goats, animals central to Lupercalia rites. The goats are not depicted as celestial beings but as earthy creatures with bellies round as filled wineskins and carcass bones. Their eyes possess a golden element, hinting at a mystical or sacred aspect. The rustle of their dry hooves and wind in the oak leaves evoke a natural, ancient rhythm. The goats' presence and their sudden movements that startle women connect to the primal energy and fertility invoked during the festival. The spirit of the ivy and the stink of goat underscore the themes of growth, decay, and the cycle of life. Section 4. The final section portrays powerful figures with thudding feet and oiled bodies brass bright, reminiscent of the vigorous participants in the Lupercalia festival. The baked red earth and electric blue sky create a vivid, intense setting. The theorem of flung effort, 
blades signifies the precision and intensity of their actions, reflecting the ritualistic and fervent nature of the festival. The dog's blessing of their fury ties back to the primal energy from the first section. The fresh thongs of goatskin in their hands are directly linked to the Lupercalia rites, where goatskin thongs were used to strike women to promote fertility. The woman being snatched into the race signifies her integration into this vigorous cycle of life and renewal. Lupercalia is from Ted Hughes' second poetry collection, Lupercal, which followed The Hawk in the Rain and was published in 1960. In this second collection, you can observe a notable shift in both style and theme compared to his first. The aggression, boisterous tone, and animal images of cruelty and ruthlessness present in his first collection are much more subdued in Lupercal. The second collection features Samba mythology, with a marked tendency to explore serious myths, as seen in poems like Lupercalia and many others in the collection. Particularly Everyman's Odyssey. When you turn to Lupercalia, you realize it celebrates the Roman festival of fertility. The poet envisions himself as a priest honoring fertility, attempting to ritualistically emulate the fertility of nature. He explores how nature gives birth to new life by sacrificing something within itself. This poem, therefore, emphasizes fertility and regeneration. Without this touch of fertility, Hugh's imagination might be rendered barren. The continuous presence of the vegetation deity serves as an assurance of Hugh's ceaselessly fertile poetic career. In a letter from 1959, Hugh summarized the significance of the Feast of Lupercalia, describing it as a Roman festival held on February 15 in honor of Zeus as a wolf. He wrote, The Feast of Lupercal was a Roman festival held on the 15th, in honor of Zeus as a wolf. Nobody knows how it originated, but it came from M.T. Lycan in Greece and combined sacrifices of goats and a dog. It was mainly a fertility rite. The fertility rite takes place at an altar dedicated to the god Lupercus, located in the Lupercal cave. Lupercus, the Roman god of shepherds, was associated with dogs and goats. During this festival, two goats and a dog were sacrificed, and their blood was used to anoint the foreheads of two young patricians, known as the Wolf Brothers. Part of the goat skin was fashioned into a thong and worn by the Lupersi, while another part was made into a whip. The Lupersi used these whips to strike those they encountered as they ran through the streets around Palatine Hill. Both fertile and infertile women sought to be struck, as it was believed that the whipping would encourage fertility and ensure unproblematic childbirth. Its origin lies in Greece, within pagan culture, and it was believed to be held on the first day of spring. This festival symbolizes the regenerative power of the natural world being transferred to the human world. The Wolf Brothers would carry a whip and strike both fertile and infertile women, signifying this transference. It not only represents the regenerative power moving from nature to humanity but also embodies the principle of sexuality intertwined with the enactment of life and death. By crafting leather-like straps from the skin and whipping the barren women of Rome, the Lupersi mimic the natural processes of death followed by regeneration. Thus, on one hand, the Lupersi represent death, while on the other, they symbolize fertility and the regeneration of life. It signifies the death of infertility and the birth of new life. In the version of the Lupersi as the vegetation deity, the ceremony initially involves the deity's disappearance into the cave, followed by a public reappearance to restore the women's sexual potency. This parallels the barren women who have lost their sexual power and await its return when touched by the Lupersi. This parallel draws a connection between the Lupercal festival and the reproductive principles of the vegetation deity. Ted Hughes likely intended to combine these two myths, the image of the vegetation deity and the myth of the Lupercal festival, when composing this poem. The aim of this whipping was to promote fertility and facilitate uncomplicated childbirth. The poem revolves around fertility myths, yet it extends beyond mere fertility to the regeneration of the human race. It serves as Ted Hughes' invocation to writing, recognizing the power of the irrational and animalistic aspects inherent in humanity. Hughes believes that if this irrationality is harnessed and nurtured properly, 
it can be channeled into creative expression. As you read this poem, there is a constant parallel drawn between sexually barren women transforming into regenerative women and the barrenness within the poet's imagination being transformed into heightened poetic. Creativity. Thus, we find two intertwined parallels. The dog loved its churlish life. Scraps, thefts, its declined blood. An anarchy of mindless pride. Nobody's pet, but good enough. To double with a bitch as poor. It had bitten ears and little stone eyes. A mouth like an incinerator. It held man's reasonable ways. Between its teeth. Received death. Closed eyes and grinning mouth. The first stanza opens with one of the sacrificial animals, the dog. This dog, petty and inconsequential, thrives on scraps and thefts. It is neither the object of domestic affection nor care, indeed, it is nobody's pet and possesses a brutish nature. It is known for biting, scratching, and causing wounds. However, observe how such a base creature, like a dog, can transform into something divine by participating in the Lupercal festival. The dog holds man between its teeth, symbolizing the potential for destruction inherent in the animal. Yet, in this particular stanza, the dog causes no harm. Symbolically, Ted Hughes suggests that this seed of creation is embedded in the very heart of destruction. Slung under carcass bones. Yet that's not brute light. And no merely mountain light. Their eyes golden element. Rustle of their dry hooves dry patter, wind in the oak, leaves, and their bent, horns, stamp, sudden reared stare, startle women, spirit of the ivy, stink of goat, of a rank thriving, O oh mountain, listener, this is the second sacrificial animal referred to, the goat, another base creature, domestic yet at the same time filthy and stinky as it stamps on the dry leaves, now ivy, the spirit of ivy, possibly representing immortality, so it is this sacrifice of the goat at the altar of Lupercal that offers eternal life to the goat. The reference is again to the creation of life from primal force, to metamorphosis a base animal, the goat, that moves around without any particular objective. How that is metamorphosed into something divine that can restore life, that can help in the regeneration of life. Over sand that the sun's burned out. Thudding feet of the powerful. Their oiled bodies brass, bright. In a drift of dust. The earth's crammed full. Its baked red bellying to the skies. Electric blue. Their attitudes. A theorem of flung effort, blades. Nothing mortal falters their poise. Though wet with blood, the dog has blessed. Their fury. Fresh thongs of goat, skin. In their hands they go bounding past, and deliberate welts have snatched her in, to the figure of races, maker of the world, hurrying the lit ghost of man, age to age while the body hold, touch this frozen one. Now we return to the group of barren women in the final stanza once more. They are struck by the Luperci or the vegetation deity, experiencing a divine restoration of regenerative powers. The vivid imagery of the wolf brothers thumping and thudding across the sand, whipping the infertile women, is prominent in this stanza. One can vividly imagine the wolf brothers in action, whipping the women. The figure of the woman is hailed as the maker of the world, highlighting her pivotal role in regeneration. The Lupercal festival reaches its peak when the dormant sexuality of women is infused with the power of regeneration. The combination of sacrifice and life, destruction and creation, serves as the central motif of the poem. Symbolically, the fertility myths represent the poet's journey from a loss of creativity and imagination to their subsequent attainment under the influence of the poetic muse. In an interview after the publication of Lupercal, Ted Hughes admits, almost all the poems in Lupercal were written as invocations to writing. 
My main consciousness in those days was that it was impossible to write so these invocations were just attempts to crack the apparent impossibility of producing anything. This is a direct reference to how these poems should be read as bursts of creativity, depicting a metamorphosis in the poet himself from barrenness to his creative self. In this regard, Lupercalia should be seen as an invocation to the muse of poetry, which incites the poet's imagination. Ted Hughes finds a parallel between the vegetation deity and the goddess of poetry. As a poet, he relies on the grace of the goddess to transform his barren imagination into a continuous flow of creativity. This creativity not only manifests in writing and composing poems but also in healing the wounds and sufferings of people through his poetry. It is crucial to interpret these poems as a form of invocation. It's not just about the fertility myth itself, but about how the fertility myth is seen as the goddess of poetry.